Welcome back to another episode of Picking Up the Pixels RPG Love. I'm your host, Boston. Joining me as always is Musim. Hello, and good evening. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> quick plug here if you want to uh, support the show, patreon.com slash e1m1. Uh, that's where you can get all the uh, extra audio, all the behind the scenes, early access, exclusives, all that stuff. The $5 a month tier is recommended one. That is per month, uh, not per episode, uh, which turns out to be a really great value piece. We put out like eight or nine episodes uh, there, and I think uh, two or three of them, uh, or four maybe, are exclusive. Um, so you're, you're getting a lot over there for, for a couple of bucks. And like we say on CVGP, if you know a rich friend, tell them that it's like $250 a month and just, uh, you know, help, help <laughs> us, help us buy new computers and stuff. Um, so all of that is over patreon.com slash E1M1. Uh, Musim, what have you been playing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I caught you right as you were about to sip. Uh, I'll just do it real slow. <laughs> what have you been playing this past month? <laughs> Uh man, not so mostly their game club game, uh Ghostwire Tokyo, which yes. uh you know, tune in for in two weeks on TVGP to hear hear the results of that. But yep. um I suspect it is pertinent to this audience, so you might check it out. It's on it, Game Pass. It's also on yeah, it's on Game Pass and some level of PlayStation Plus. I have no mm. idea. It just says mm. like it's included with your membership. So uh it, you you probably already own it on some platform. You can go yes. go check it out. Yes. Play play along with us. Yes. Um so uh I played a little bit more Chrono Trigger. Um, All right. So I, I kind of I fell off it kind of hard though, because uh I, I basically just had the Go Beat Lavos or the uh, DS Dungeons. And mm -hmm. um, holy crap, I forgot how absolutely boring the DS Dungeons are. Like, yeah. They're, um, for, for those that haven't played it, it's, uh, they have one, gosh, basically you have two colonies of these reptites that are friendly. Um, and one of them is in like 65 million BC and the others in 600 AD. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're basically going to one and talking to people in this village till they give you a quest. And there are like, if you leave the village in any direction, you'll encounter a dungeon and each quest takes place in one of those dungeons and you will go to them repetitiously and have yeah. to go between the time periods to open up paths. And, like, don't get me wrong. It's, like, there's some entertaining anecdotes, like the, um, I forgot his name, but there's a, uh, a creature, you know, one of those eggplant-looking robot guys. Right. Um, one of those guys who's who thinks he's tough that you have to beat a couple times. <laughs> and I'm entertained by his dialogue, but... right. Like, I'm far enough into these dungeons that I don't want to beat the game without finishing them. Um, but I really just want to ditch off the dungeons and beat the game because they're so freaking boring. Yeah, I remember them being just... Like, there's some cool ideas in there, and I, I like the I like them ch kind of changing the way that Chrono Trigger works. But there's just... They're all a little too long. Like you said, they're all a little too repetitive, and it's sort of like... All right, I'm, I hope I get something good out of this because I'm doing I'm doing a lot of dungeons here, man. Yeah, like, like when I have to just resort to just entirely reading the wiki as I go, like, and not just once in a while. It's like mm -hmm. that's I, I I just don't have that in me anymore. Like I have to have the yeah. mindset of like I'm gonna go play an old PS1 game with the freaking FAQ. Like I have yeah, to, I'd have it open on my laptop next to me, yes. and that's how we're doing it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so I kind of fell off that and then uh, started my other comfort food game, which is uh, Mass Effect. Um, mm. And this time I'm playing on Steam Deck. I am playing the legendary version. Okay, um, how's that run on the uh, the Steam Deck? It runs about 99% well, but the EA launcher for it is a giant pain in the butt. Ah, uh, um, there you go. You, you uh, like it. It basically ran well for like the first couple weeks and then it wouldn't load. It would just hang on the loading screen. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And it turns out every once in a while you just have to delete all the Proton files, uh, you know, Steam's emulator. Uh, sure. Um, so that it will re download the EA deal. <laughs> and then when it does, like you have to, you know, type all your stupid password information in. Like, right. 
I need my I need my password manager to have a plug in on Steam, I think. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh so that's a giant fan of it, but I've, I've barely made it anywhere in Mass Effect. So I, I mm. rolled up a, uh, a Lady Shepard. Um, okay. It's been a while since I've, I've, I've gone the Lady route, and uh, I I came to a conclusion early on. See, I landed, you know, you get past that opening mission, and then you go on the Citadel, and my knee jerk every time I'm in the Citadel is like, oh, crap, here's the next four hours of my life. That's right. It's so big. Uh, there's so much cool stuff. I got to do it all. The thing I forget is most of that four hours is tracking down all the keepers. Um, yeah. <laughs> yep. And if you just do the story stuff, then it's it's over pretty quick. You get Rex and Tally and Garrus and yep. um. And so what I've determined is like, what is doing every side mission in the game ever done for me in this? Like, mm -hmm. you get like a ton of like emails, you know, in Mass Effect Two and some in Mass Effect Three, but it's like, yeah. I think I'm just gonna cherry pick man like yeah i i remember the only benefit that i could see was if you do everything at least in the 360 version for every achievement you got there was a new sort of overpowered item in that that uh not the csec store but the the specter store there's like that specter vendor oh, um, yeah. you could get that but i think unless you're kind of do everything like if you're gonna do 100 percent of the game i don't know if you do everything yeah like i'm not gonna go through every single planet like i don't yeah those emails are just not worth it to me it's yeah i'm probably gonna do a quick google search on some of the major plot points and see like is there any odd side activity i'm gonna miss by not doing this um and yeah just, that that's a good point because now now people will know all right if you do this in the first one this will be available in the third one and it's a cool thing or like it's an important thing so you should make sure you do these at the bare minimum that that's a good point yeah like i, I bet someone out there has made a here are the critical side quests you should do yep. and here's the ones that are kind of neat and <laughs> these ones you can forget and yeah um yeah and, and you know like the big the, I remember the two hardest ones to get in the third game. Uh, one of them is multi-game dependent, and that is uh, bringing peace between the Quarians and the Gath. Ah, um, uh, right. That, like, you have to do some very specific games, or s the things uh, in all three games. Um, and then the other one that's hard to get is when you talk the elusive man into shooting himself. Um, oh, right. I forgot I, about that. I think I've done that, but I'm not sure, and I never remember how you do it. So yeah, I don't remember. I think that's all third game dependent. I don't think it's dependent on the other two. I might be wrong. Mm. Uh, it's been. It doesn't matter. This is just a uh, you know uh, YOLO style run. Like I'm not. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna invest a whole lot of research time into it, other than kind of what I just said, and mm. it'll be what it'll be, and maybe I'll do all the DLC. Maybe I won't. Um, yep. I figure I'm gonna, you know, go for the Garrus romance because why, mm -hmm. why not? Yeah. Um, although, like, it's always tempting to go with Thane in part two, but uh, yeah, um, Thane's cool. The hard part is part one, where neither of those are options, and your options are, you know, you, you either go Kaiden if he is alive for some reason, or uh, <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> I say it. I feel like Ashley is almost just as bad, but she's. She is a better character, I feel like, once she reaches yeah. the third game. Um, yeah, her her horrible space racism in the first two games is bad. Yeah. I'm not going to be here and be like, yeah, racism is good. Um, but, like, man, Caden sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you and I agree on this, but, like, I feel like the 99% of everybody else is like, why would you kill Caden? He's the best. And it's like, I just, I don't see it. I will never see it, man. You know, he's... Have you... Have you ever watched the What We Do in the Shadows TV show? No, not yet. So there's a character on there. I forget his name. Um, but he's a uh, emotion vampire type. Okay. So what he does is he walks around and bores everyone. And as they get more bored, he feeds on like okay. their energy. All right. And, and that's what I feel about Kaiden. I feel yeah. like he is an energy vampire that yep. just sucks me dry with every line of dialogue. Every, every time you talk to him, he's always like, I set this girl on fire with my brain powers. It's like, <laughs> God, I was just getting a coffee, man. Like, what, 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 what are you doing? 
Sorry you got the L2 implants. God, get right, like, an upgrade. Come it on. It sucks, bro, but come on. Like you're you're like you're on my team. You can afford stuff now. They'll That's probably right. just do fix you if you ask. That's right. Uh, oh man. Anyway. Mass So right. that's that's uh, that's all I've played. Uh, mm. So, Boston, what you got? All right. Uh, first game here is um, sometimes we talk about visual novels here because no one else really does. Um, so recently on Switch and PC, Tron Identity got released. Um, this is from Bithel Games, headed by Mike Bithel. They made. Um, Thomas was alone, the solitaire conspiracy and a whole bunch of other really cool, uh, games. And this one is a Tron visual novel kind of detective story. Like the top of this big tower on one of the servers, uh, there's a vault that exploded and no one knows what was in the vault. So no one knows what got stolen and no one knows who did it. Uh, and they kind of have a couple of, um, a couple of uh, suspects there. Um, it it does some pretty neat stuff with the kind of visual novel formula. Um, one thing that I like a lot is that it shows each person's text. Their color is the same color as their outfit. So you know, like in Tron, everyone always has like the cool like neon tubing that goes through all their clothes and stuff so like if this guy has all the red clothes on his text is in red this guy's in yellow his text is in yellow um there's there's not a lot of there's not at the beginning of the game there's not a lot of stuff you need to know about the movies which i really appreciate it's not hey do you remember this thing from tron legacy it's popping up it's like most of the the most Tron thing you see at the beginning in like the first five minutes is two people chasing each other on light cycles and that's kind of it um so y you don't really need to know Tron stuff um they do have a really interesting thing that I like a lot where in your codex when you look at an individual character it will have a flow chart underneath it um, and like the top of the flowchart is you met this person. And then as you continue the story, your choices are laid out in that flowchart as you go. So like maybe the first one has two branches and it's like you befriended this person, you made an enemy of this person. If the befriend one has like three options underneath it, the enemy one has two options underneath it, and each one of those has two on underneath it. So you get a really cool... Um, I get the impression this game isn't super long, so I like the idea of, all right, you finished a playthrough of it, maybe it took you a handful of hours, if you want to go see something else that's neat, go deal with this person in a different way. Um, which I, I, I like, more and more visual novels are doing that, instead of just like, like we talked about earlier, like, I hope you have the fact up, because, man, I don't know. Um, the other thing that I think is really interesting is, they really early on ask your character the question of, do you fight for the users or do you fight for the programs? And it's really neat because they get into this kind of theological discussion about it of there's almost churches of these people fight for the users because of course they would, the users need to be protected and, and et cetera, et cetera. And these people believe in fighting for the programs because, oh, that's what Tron told us to do. And why would we why would we do anything otherwise and stuff like that? So there's, I like that they're exploring Tron as an idea as opposed to here is the, the first movie or here's the second movie and we're just going to retell it to you, but it's in text. So I, I like that they're taking a different tack on Tron and kind of looking at it in a different way than than I think we we typically get, um, and it's nice to see a, a Tron game that isn't it. We're racing light cycles and stuff like that, or we're throwing a data disc and stuff like that. It's like we people have tried those before and they they haven't been great. So let's let's try something much cooler and, and much slower and, and kind of quieter. Um, 
So, Toronto Identity is cool. I'm playing the Switch version. There hasn't been any issues at all, um, which I wasn't really expecting there to be because it's just reading text. Um, also, the soundtrack is really good. I feel like if you're going to do a Tron thing, you have to have a really good soundtrack, and Tron Identity has a very good one. So, Who did the soundtrack? Do you know? Oh, man. Um, I haven't heard of this composer before that I know of. Uh, Dan Lasak? Yeah, I don't um, know that one. Yeah, he... What else has he done? Uh, Space Between, Subsurface Circular, um, a, a couple of... Uh, a couple of pretty good Ark Smith, um, a couple of pretty good uh, indie games that I I per I sorry I personally haven't played, um, but it's I think he does a really good job of making a Tron soundtrack that isn't the Daft Punk one because um, I feel like people are gonna be like oh how's the how's the soundtrack is it you know yeah. is, is Daft Punk and it's like no it's but it feels very Tron. Which I think is is pretty impressive. So, that's cool, man. I forgot that game was happening. I I need to play that. Yeah, it's really cool so far, and I, I haven't had a ton of time to to dip into it. I think I played it for probably about an hour and a half. Um, if I was to guess, it's probably like a four hour game at most, um, which I I kind of appreciate because I feel like even early going, I don't think the game needs to be longer than that like it it seems like it's going to tell a pretty concise story and kind of get in and get out which i i like um next game here uh the final fantasy 5 pixel remaster um i started and finished and platinumed this <laughs> uh so this actually i didn't even realize it until it popped but it is my 50th platinum uh which is kind of a nice synchronicity there of Final Fantasy V. Um, we talked about this, the PC version of this, a while ago when it came out. Um, I don't I don't think I put enough time into it uh, then, honestly. Um, but for the first time in I, I don't know how long, maybe since the RPG E translation of the Super Famicom one back in the 90s, um, it did absolutely everything. Um, because to get the platinum, you have to get everything in your beast here. You have to open up all the chests. You have to fight both of the super bosses. You have to do absolutely everything in the game. Um, which, since I play the Final Fantasy V Forge Job Fiesta every year, I typically don't do. Um, so it was kind of a fun exercise of like, oh yeah, I haven't done Phoenix Tower in 20-something years. Uh, so... Let's go through and let's try and remember how to do all that stuff. Um, I'm really happy with this version. Um, I, If you're watching the video version, this unfortunately doesn't have the new font uh, that the PS4 and Switch versions have. I can't find anybody that's using it, uh, which is strange. Um, but I think it's way better uh, than the original. Um, it is a more pixel font than the kind of original... Uh, sans serif kind of thin one uh, I wish it was a little bit thicker but I think it read a lot better on my TV than it ever really did in trailers and shortcuts or screenshots and stuff uh, which is kind of the opposite of what I was expecting um, the big benefit here especially for Final Fantasy V um, and I know they did something similar for Final Fantasy 2, especially. Well, all of the games have it, but Final Fantasy 2 benefits from it the most. Um, is they have boosts. So you can... Let me see if I remember this menu. <clears throat> you can turn off random encounters. Uh, you can also change that by clicking in the right stick. Um, which is great, especially when you're limping your way out of a dungeon. It's like, please, I just... <laughs> I just I need to make my way through here and 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 just get out of here. Um, you can change how much experience you get. So either zero times, 0.5 times, double or quadruple. Uh, same thing with gill and same thing with ABP, uh, which is super important for Final Fantasy V because getting times four. Uh, 
ABP for your jobs, even starting at the beginning of the game, is is pretty huge to kind of kickstart you for the mixing and matching for um, for all the jobs you're going to be learning. Um, also, in case people didn't know with Final Fantasy V, the more jobs you master, the stronger the freelancer class gets. Um, so at some point, you've mastered enough classes or jobs that freelancer becomes just this like unstoppable tank, which is really fun. Um, but I, I, I didn't run into any problems in this. They actually, uh, in this version too, they actually have, um, you can switch between the original soundtrack and the, uh, pixel remaster version too, uh, on the fly, uh, which is really great for someone like me that has listened to the soundtrack too much. Um, cause there's a bunch of times where I'm listening to it. And I'm like, there's like an instrument missing here or they like there's a weird <laughs> horn effect here it's like oh, let, let me switch back to the original one it's like okay there's like this maraca shaky i don't know what the instrument is where there's like a wooden tube with like the the steel balls on the outside that you just shake um oh and, yeah yeah and it's like all right that instrument is missing but i i bet if you replicated this with all of the other because the soundtrack now is live instruments it's a lot of like here's a guy with a, a standing bass and a bunch of horns and some violins. Uh, and here's the song that you know super well. Um, so it's kind of interesting that they didn't replicate that one-to-one, -one, um, but they the soundtrack isn't fundamentally different than it was before, which I think is a really interesting kind of balancing act, I'm sure they did, but... Um, all of it's really great. They did a, did a really great job with the boss, the final boss music, which is always kind of one of the most important ones. Um, but shockingly, this is really good. Um, I, I I was ready to come in here and be like, oh, they broke it, and they oh they did this, and it's still not that great. Um, but it ran great. There's only one super small criticism I have, and it probably only bothers me. Um, but when your character is moving horizontally or vertically on the screen, it's fine. But when they're moving diagonally, because you can move diagonally in this version, the frame rate gets weird. It's not bad, but it's weird. And I'm sure if you haven't played this however, 40, 50 million times like I have, it probably doesn't matter. But it's one of those things where sort of like, oh, that's a little... That's odd. Okay. Strange. Um, but... I hear the same thing about all of the other versions, especially Final Fantasy VI um, has had the intro credits restored, sort of, um, which is great. Final Fantasy II has a great boost in it where um, you can guarantee that your party members get HP bonuses after a certain number of battles, even if they're not getting hit. Um, so I, I like that there's a little bit of quality of life stuff improved in this. It's not... They're not radically different games, but I like that there's a little bit of, like, here is the big pain point in the game, and here's an optional way for you to to kind of get around that. So, um, it's cool. I'm, I'm super happy this turned out well. Um, I hear uh, no complaints about the Switch version either. Uh, and now, thankfully now it's on Switch, you can play Final Fantasy 1 through 12, except for 11, uh, on Switch now so if you wanted to catch up on all of and i don't believe that there are any of the versions there that are bad um so you want to start at the final fantasy games got a whole bunch of them there now if you want to do that so um i'll eventually go back and play uh some of the other ones i'd like to play through especially ones i haven't played through that much like uh two and four I've i haven't played a super ton um so i'd like to go through and and play a bunch of those but they're pretty expensive, uh, so I will wait to do that. And I did not feel like spending these seventy-five dollars to get the full six-pack because that's Oof, yeah, that's that's a lot of cash. I swear, goodness. Uh, next game here is Horizon Forbidden West: Burning Shores. Woo! Yeah, uh, I haven't played. <laughs> I haven't played this. <laughs> so, but I want to say, reason I haven't played this is a, a, a sort of a forewarning. For people that are are like me and are looking to hop back into Forbidden West, is that 
number one, I pre-ordered this a couple days before it came out. And I was like, all right, I'm going to pre-order it. It'll do its downloading thing. I'll fire the game up. So <laughs> I fire the game up and it's like, all right, here's a patch. It's like, I have had this installed for like two months getting rid. Okay, fine. And it's like, it's a 25 gig patch. It's like, I swear. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I will come back tomorrow. I'll just let it do its thing. Fine, fine, fine. So I fire the game back up and it has the normal screen from Horizon Forbidden West when you have like the load game, new game, continue, that sort of thing. And up in the upper right hand corner, it says um, Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores uh, relaunch game after downloading. And it's like, are you seriously? Okay, let me go look. It had not downloaded automatically. So I was like, okay, cool. How big is it? 35 gigs. Okay. See you tomorrow. So I downloaded that and then finally fired it up. It was patched. Everything was downloaded. Everything was set. I hit continue on the game and I am in chain scrape with all of the map covered up by fog of war. And I was like, that's wait, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> That's the beginning of the game. Uh, and I had forgotten. I had tried out new game plus and I got to chain scrape after fit it's skipping the intro, which it lets you do in new game plus. Um, and I was just like, cool. What's, uh, what's up with that? And the game is like, you need to progress further in the story to unlock this thing. And I was like, I, oh my God. Okay, fine. So I eventually found a save, reloaded the save before I beat the game. And then as soon as I loaded that up, silence was amazing. You're saying, Aloy. And it's like, all right, okay, here, now, now we're doing stuff. And he's like, you need to come meet me here at the spoiler, spoiler place. And then we can go to the, the burning shores. And I was like, okay, perfect. Now I'm, now after much trials and tribulation, I am back. I'm back on the horse here. Um, I did spend a little bit of time checking out. It looks like there's a whole new bottom tier of each one of the skill trees um, with like a new kind of ultimate skill all the way at the bottom of each one of them. Um, all of them seem okay, but nothing... I think we had the, this kind of criticism with the skill tree in the, the vanilla game was sort of like, none of these are going to be huge game changers. You know, there's there's nothing in there that's going to break the game wide open. And it seems like that continues to be the case with uh, those new skill trees too, unfortunately. Um, so I'm now at the point where I can play Burning Shores. <laughs> After all of that, I just have not yet done it. So, so man, funny story, like... I, I didn't play Horizon at all, but I had that exact same experience of I had it pre-ordered. Like I started mm -hmm. downloading the Game Club game. I'm like, I'm going to play Horizon Forbidden Shores because right. my PlayStation automatically downloads things. And it did right. not download either of those patches by itself for <laughs> whatever reason. It's the only game that's done it to me. Like every oh, half the time when a game has a patch, I'm like in the middle of playing something and it closes the game down to patch it. And it's like, <laughs> no! That's not... Come on! <laughs> oh, man. So, yes. Hopefully next month we will have yeah. a, a little bit of coverage here of uh, yeah. of uh, Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores, which I'm still excited to play. Uh, I just need to have it work and then have a little bit of time to, to start playing it. I'm excited. I just know I'm not going to finish the Game Club game if I start playing it now. Yeah, like. exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you gotta got to prioritize it. Yeah. Uh, next game here, real quick, um, Honkai Star Rail came out on mobile devices and PC this past uh, month. Uh, this is Mihoyo's new game of uh, Honkai Impact 3, and um, their big one that I'm going to forget the name of, uh, the open world Zelda one. It's like the biggest... Oh, Genshin game. Impact? Oh, thank you. Yes, Genshin Impact. Just one of the biggest games on the planet that I <laughs> cannot remember the title of. Um, if you've played Genshin Impact, y you kind of know what you're getting into here. Um, the main difference here is that it is a turn-based JRPG um, that is pretty standard for what you're going to get. Um, it it 
you have three party members, you have a bunch of enemies, you have a turn order up in the upper left hand corner. Every enemy has like an elemental kind of break bar, and when you when you break that thing, they lose a turn essentially. Um, I kind of wish it was like the Shin Megami Tensei, like what was that the press break turn turn break oh, press yeah. turn system, whatever that whatever that system is called. A combination of those words. Depending yeah, well, on which game you're in. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. Whichever whichever combo that is. Um, I kind of wish it was that because. I still love just breaking that game apart when you start taking advantage of that system. I just wish it was in more stuff. Um, but so far, this is okay. It looks great. It sounds great. The English voice acting is really good. Um, I was surprised this has any English voice acting. Um, but it so far has been really good. It's anime as hell, as usual. One of the characters' names is March 7th. That's just her name. So if you if you want to get an idea of how anime it is. Um, and just in case you didn't know, this is a gacha game. It feels a little bit better than Genshin Impact or a lot of the other games, because I feel like one of the biggest problems we run into with these games is you're pulling on a banner for characters and armor and equipment and weapons and stuff like this. It's a little bit better because you're pulling for characters and then you're pulling for something I call, I believe it's light cones. It's essentially the only equipment that characters can equip. Um, so it feels a, a little bit better, but it's still a MiHoYo game and have like some of the lowest pull rates in, in the industry. So Oof. it's, it's not going to get much better than something like... Uh, Genshin Impact, which felt could feel pretty stingy, and there's like pity pulls and stuff on there too that they they tell you pretty clearly. But when you look at the pull rates, it's like, yeah, here's a five star. It's a zero point zero 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 five one seven eight percent. It's just like, gosh, seriously, okay. Um, so you know that's you kind of know what you're getting into, and if you're listening to this and being like, I hate gotcha games. This isn't the one to, to change your mind on, on how that stuff runs. Um, I have been playing it on uh, iOS. Uh, it does have controller support, allegedly, uh, but uh, controller support isn't available until after the tutorial is done, which is weird, and the tutorial is pretty long, um, which is fine, because it sort of assumes you've never played, like a, people are calling them command RPGs nowadays, um, but essentially like a turn-based, command-based RPG. Um, so if you've never played one of those, <clears throat> it really does go out of its way to kind of explain to you and show you how to play the game, which is great because uh, there are plenty of people that have not played command RPGs before. So um, I don't know if I'm going to stick with this. I'm, I, have, I feel like I'm pretty burnt out on gacha games in general after Epic 7 um, mm. and... I don't know how much I want to dive into another one, even though it's like a cool turn-based thing. Um, so I, I don't know if I'll be talking about it again, but uh, I'd, I'd probably rather, if I'm going to stick with like a turn-based RPG gotcha game, I would probably just play the Octopath Traveler one on mobile, which everybody says is genuinely really good and has a pretty incredible story. So I'd probably just stick with that one instead. Uh, final game here. Uh, the recently released Redfall, uh, the Arcane Studios first-person shooting zombie thing. Um, as soon as I mentioned the word Redfall, the first thing you have probably thought of is, boy, people really hate that game. Um, I, I don't necessarily hate it. I... And I don't mean this in a mean way. I just don't know what happened. <laughs> like, so much about this game just went wrong in a way that I just, I don't understand. Um, it is fundamentally in a really weird spot. The shooting feels okay-ish. Um, the enemy AI is really very bad um a lot of 
enemies that are just going to kind of turn their back to you and walk away while you're shooting them or enemies that are running at you in a direct straight line, uh, which neither of which feels super good. Um, both console and PC have pretty serious performance issues. Um, the console version we knew about beforehand is locked at 30 frames uh, until the, there's a patch that comes out uh, for, for Xbox consoles. Um, that's fine because based on how much I played it on consoles, it seems like it's locked at 30, um, which is fine. Uh, it, it could be, you know, quote unquote, aiming for 30 and that would be way worse. Um, there's a lot of motion blur though, which is not great. Um, on PC, I had a lot of significant performance issues. Um, I have a 3070 in my machine, so not really a slouch of a card um, and way above their kind of recommended or minimal specs. Um, and there are long stretches, uh, stretches of the game where I'm getting 15 frames a second for tens of seconds at a time. Uh, it's not just like a dip here or there. Um, I did try, I started the game by playing on high video settings. I eventually moved all the way down to low and I still had the frame rate issues. So something is real wonky with that in general. And I think the thing that I'm kind of bummed out about mostly is that it's just kind of boring. There's not a whole lot. I think when you think of arcane, you kind of think of these puzzles that you're doing through levels. You know, here's a building you're getting into and here's four or five different ways to get into it. You know, you got the hacking thing and you just go guns loud on the front door and stuff like that. There's really none of that here. Um, they're kind of boring cookie cutter missions after cookie cutter missions and a kind of empty lifeless world that's a real just a real bummer to play. So I'm hoping they get some of the performance issues handled because I I think if they do there can be a game in here that's fun to play with friends, I think. Um it has up to <coughs> excuse me has up to four player co-op, which I think can be kind of fun. I, I played it solo uh, for this just to see how it was after it was getting some really bad coverage. Um, but I think once the 60 frame patch comes out on consoles, I'll probably check it back out. Uh, maybe they've smoothed some of the kind of rough edges here. And if not, then uh, maybe it's it's a kind of an okay game that didn't live up to Arcane's kind of promise that the studio usually has. And if that's the case, then that's fine. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's as bad as most people are saying. There's a disappointingly high number of people online now that are saying, you know, Microsoft and Arcane should just give up on supporting this game it's not even worth the trouble but holy crap <laughs> yeah i think that's pretty harsh i don't think i'm i don't think i would agree with like the nuclear option i think there's something here that could be pretty interesting i just think it's largely a game that's kind of boring at the moment which is not usually a thing you think of with arcane's games um so I don't know. I, I play for about four or five hours and I, I don't feel super great about it. I'm glad it's on Game Pass because I'm, I'm glad I got a, a chance to check it out. I feel like if it wasn't on Game Pass with all this bad coverage and press and all the bad impressions, I probably just wouldn't have checked it out at all. Um, but I think, there's, I think there's something kind of buried in here that could be pretty interesting. Um, I, I think it just needs needs a lot of TLC. Uh, to, to kind of get into a better spot. Um, and that's a, unfortunately the last game I played this week, which means we're kind of ending that segment on a bit of a bummer, but that's, I mean, that's sort of how it goes sometimes. Um, before we go here, let's talk about our RPG releases for May 2023. Ease 9 Monstrum Nox comes out on PS5 on May 9th. Um, that's been on 
so many other platforms before now. Uh, but I think this is, I believe this is the uh, native PS5 version, which would be nice. Uh, the Lord of the Rings Heroes of Middle Earth comes out on iOS and Android on May 10th. Uh, this is a free-to-play, turn-based RPG Lord of the Rings thing. Um, since it's mobile, I'm assuming there's some sort of gotcha or mobile trans microtransaction nightmare lurking under the surface that we haven't seen. So, you know, player beware, I guess, whatever that translates to in Latin. Uh, Marvel's Midnight Suns comes out PS4 and Xbox One on the 11th. Uh, they originally had a Switch version planned, but they dropped that at the same time they announced uh, these two versions. So, yeah, seeing uh, how slow that thing runs on on Steam Deck, like, yeah, I get why. Like, I'm I'm curious about the performance on PS. Wait, PS4? Yeah, PS4 oh. and Xbox One. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the the previous gen consoles is getting getting a version, which is okay. I, I'm kind of. I, I'm happy that it's happening because there's still a lot of PS4 and Xbox Ones out there, but um, I don't think anyone would have been too mad if it would have stayed a current-gen uh, yeah. game. But um, I know they've been uh, dumping a bunch of DLC out for that, so it's, like, it's a lot a, of good stuff. It's a fun game. I need to get back to it and yeah. just come to terms with that I just need to stream it from my PC instead of actually running it from my Steam Deck. Right, right, right. Um, a game I keep forgetting is coming out. Fuga Melodies of Steel 2 comes out. PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series Console, Switch, and PC on May 11th. This is Game Pass day and date. Um, at the very least on Xbox platforms, I don't know about for PC. Because um, until until stuff comes out on Game Pass, I feel like it's always a little bit swiffy about, oh, is it PC Game Pass? Is it Xbox Game Pass? Which one is it? So... Um, I'm I'm real excited about this coming out because uh, I really really like the first one and so far the second one seems like they've kind of taken the strengths of that first one and extended it a little bit without hopefully ruining what made that the first one great um, which is horrible ter terror with children um, <laughs> so we'll see I'll I'll definitely be picking this up I'll probably pick pick this up on PS5 to support uh, Cyber Connect. Um, and I'll probably also download it on Game Pass just to support them in as many places as I can. Um, talking about the beginning of the next month, Etrian Odyssey Origins Collection comes out on Switch and PC on the 1st. Um, if you haven't watched the gameplay trailer that came out a while ago, I would highly recommend doing that. Um, it looks like they have pretty faithfully translated those three games uh, onto the the switch and PC, um, including uh, doing the the map drawing and everything. Um, <clears throat> since a lot of people seem to be asking about this, there are two options to purchase this. You can purchase each game separately. I think they're about thirty bucks a pop, uh, which is there's a lot of gameplay in each one of them, but th that's pretty pricey. And I believe if you buy them as a three pack, it's sixty dollars. So it's either 60 or 70. So you can save a pretty good amount of money by by purchasing the three pack. But it's pretty pretty pricey either way if you haven't played an Etrian Odyssey game and, and you're not entirely sure if you know you'll like them. But um, they're, I, I've played a couple of those and I, I like them quite a bit. If you like the idea of drawing your own maps of a dungeon, Etrian Odyssey probably holds a lot for you. <laughs> Uh, and last but certainly not least here, Diablo 4 comes out PS4, PS5, Xbox One, series consoles, and PC on June 6th, uh, which I'm very excited to play. Gosh, you know, that's probably Redfall's death knell right there, right? Like, Yeah, for a lot of players, I think. Yeah, that's... If I were a dev, I would not want a multiplayer game within a month of, of Diablo No, 4. yeah, like you, you're gonna... I think everybody is kind of moving out of the way. Uh, of that one so i think i'm going to be out of town as soon as it launches which really sucks um so i'm 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 probably gonna have to wait like two weeks to to play that which is a a real turbo bummer um it, be, it would be the one great time if they had this on switch uh for, for for that to happen but i don't believe this is coming out on switch uh at least not now so um 
I'm sure we'll talk about that uh, whenever we we come back for June. But um, all right, <clears throat> that's all of our releases for this week. We don't really have any news stories because they're all kind of a bummer in general, or they're just hey, this game is coming out, and that's what we just talked about. So. Uh, if you'd like to visit us, you can do so at pickingupthepixels.com. Everywhere to find and follow us is on the right-hand side of the page. Uh, Musum, where can we find you online? You can find me at my link tree at l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash John Musum, J-o-h-n-m-u-s-i-m, and that is links to all my music and uh, the relevant social media. Nice. And don't forget that the first Friday of every month is Bandcamp Friday, so if you're looking to buy some Bandcamp stuff, any time is good, but First Friday is especially good. Yes. Um, uh, you can find all my stuff at e1m1.com. I think that's everything for our episode. Patreon.com slash e1m1. Uh, so we'll see you all next month. Bye. Bye.